Hello everyone, Praise and Brayden here, and today I'm playing some Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014. I recently purchased this about a week ago uh, on Steam. It's available for $10 and was released in June of this year. Now I've been playing the crap out of this game, to be quite honest, and I figured since I've taken quite a break from YouTube uh, for a little while, why don't I kickstart with something that I'm enjoying a heck of a lot and also playing a hell of a lot. So I am starting up a series on Magic the Gathering. This first episode however is just going to be an introduction to what Magic the Gathering is, what this game is, what you get and what you don't get and I'll show you through the different uh, game modes, uh, the decks and uh, some of the extras and stuff that you you can uh, you can unlock uh, while playing. So as I said available on Steam for ten dollars, that gives you, I believe it's six or is it eight decks? I'm not sure. Uh, you, you can check that up. I've also downloaded the DLC, which is an additional five dollars, and that gives you an extra three decks as well as uh, another campaign uh, to go through. And I'll I'll, I'll show you those camp campaigns in a second. So. If you haven't played Magic before, it is a card-based game, a, a TCG, as they like to call it, or trading card game, where you battle other players with their cards, and your cards are creatures and spells and abilities and enchantments and all sorts of goodies that you use uh, to defeat the other person. And you have to use great cunning and strategy in order to do that. So let's take a look at what you get with the game here this is the main screen this here is Chandra who is the the poster girl for this uh, version of magic the 2014 edition you can see she's quite on fire she's a hot she's hot stuff and uh, her deck which I'll show you is the the, op the starting deck you get which is a a mountains based deck what are mountains you ask well let's get to that now Single player, we've got a bunch of stuff. We've got the campaign uh, game, uh, which is a bunch of uh, challenges against various components. Uh, does I say components? Opponents, rather. <laughs> and uh, defeating them unlocks the decks, because you only get two, uh, one or two unlocked when you first buy the game. You have to unlock the rest through the campaign mode. And you'll see there's all these various lands, and camp uh, which contain a bunch of challenges. Each come with a story, Innistrad being the very first uh, chapter in the campaign. So if we click on here, you'll see a little story. Ramaz gave me a pendant from a plane called Innistrad. The mark on it symbolizes some militant order there. If you can track down its owner, maybe they'll know something about Ramaz. Careful though, nothing's more dangerous than armed zealots. Indeed. That is Chandra talking. You are a sort of assisting her in her quest to get revenge on someone or other for for doing something just taking something from her anyway this is the campaign here and you start off by battling this before you can move up the ranks to the boss guy here who's Sigismund and Sigismund will give you a deck when you defeat him so you have to go through and defeat all these characters they're essentially human based uh, for the most part or well, these are here this one is a bit of a zombies uh, which come from the black deck or the swamps and there are these planeswalker duels you can do afterwards I think which uh, allow you to battle some of the other main characters so we've got Garuk here who's a forest deck a green deck and we've got your Jace who's blue which is the the oceans uh, etc here's Chandra herself so you battle these characters just for unlocking various cards each deck you get consists of six, uh, 60 cards no 40 60, 60 cards, and there are between 20 to 40 additional cards you can get. You can either unlock them by uh, playing against players and defeating them, be it a uh, single player or multiplayer, or you can just purchase them on Steam for 99 cents a pop, and that unlocks the additional cards per deck. You do not have much flexibility in customizing them, but we'll get to that. So this is the, the campaign. Sealed play is a different type of game where you get two slots by default. You can unlock up to an additional three, but you have to pay for them. One dollar ninety-nine on Steam, and a sealed deck is essentially eight 
packs of randomly generated cards, one legendary, two rares and a bunch of commons, which are the card types, and with those you customize your own deck which you can then take into this campaign and battle a bunch of people. You can also use these decks to play against other players. So this is where you sort of get total customization of your deck, which is quite a can be quite a quite fun to piece together a great deck. And apparently this deck is awesome, but hey, that's what they say. We've got challenges which are, are quite fun. You're given an, a, a scenario in which you have to defeat a, a an opponent within one turn. They've got their cards out, you've got your cards, it's, re it's all been set up for you. You have to use the cards that you have in your hand and on your battlefield to your advantage in order to defeat the opponent and win the challenge. So they're quite, they, 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 they require a lot of brain power, a lot of strategy and you need to know your cards. You can see here I still haven't finished some of these. These ones with the rusty looking rim have been defeated. The golden ones are still undefeated. So I do need to get to those at some point, but I won't really play much of the challenges because that would sort of be spoiler to you, sort of show you how to do them. Where you know the whole point is for you to utilize what you've learned about your cards and strategies that you can play and do it yourself. Custom game, as it says, you can create a custom game and just play with uh, the AI uh, um, just for fun. Two-headed giant, different game mode where you essentially team up with another person. So it's two of you versus another two, and you play together, and uh, and the teams have a sort of unified life bar that you need to take down. The revenge is uh, you unlock this after completing the campaign, and this is essentially just battling the various villains throughout the deck again. Um, and why do you want to do that? Well achievements and cards and that sort of thing and the expansion this is what I got for buying the expansion pack some extra campaigns some extra challenges and the revenges for that this again unlocked when I completed the campaign so that is sort of the single player what you get multiplayer as I said you, you play against other people you can create your own match and you can have quick matches where you just jump into someone's game and you choose a deck or you can go for random and then you just battle it out and see how it goes the deck manager, we'll get to that, there's there's a lot going on in there. That's where you actually get to look at your decks and your cards and sort of customize to a certain extent the deck that you have. And when we get to the deck manager, we'll look at the decks that you have in more detail as well as the various types of cards you can get and what they do. Player status is you as a character. This is my avatar here and these are certain achievements and, 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 and goodies I've unlocked. The titles, as you can see it says here, Brazen Braden the Impaler. The Impaler is my title, and by playing you unlock various titles. So Mage of Jade and Chandelar Champion. Some of these, like this one, Innistrad Champion, comes from defeating the Innistrad campaign uh, in the single player. So there's all these various uh, titles you can unlock and assign to yourself. Spell Slinger, Master of the Planes, etc. And I have got to... Well, there's a bunch here that I still have to get, so so yeah. But I've chosen the Impaler, which I sound, which I think sounds quite cool. I've seen quite a few players with, uh, where is it? This one, the Puppet Master, and the Annihilator. This seems to be quite popular uh, as choices. Anyways, total, totally, you know, up to you, personal preference. The achievements that you unlock also, Steam achievements, also again come from playing uh, games, winning uh, challenges, winning. Uh, winning games and uh, completing certain certain things so for instance here won a game while dealing no combat damage to a player so that's sort of uh, done completely through uh, spells and, and 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 that sort of thing not with creatures and uh, 125 games I got another achievement etc etc and there's the personas which are your characters your your avatars that you can unlock and there's a whole bunch of them this one this guy here is the one you start off with he's the default and then you can unlock these by again completing missions and challenges etc but I quite like my character this guy up here it says my mana color is green that is mainly because I chose a green deck for a lot of the single player campaign and we will talk about this green forest deck shortly there are five different types of deck that you can see here the white the blue the black, 
the red and the green. The white is the plains. The plains land. This is the the oceans. The blue. The black are swamps. The red are mountains, and the green are forests. And then here's some sort of basic statistics. I've won 78 games. Uh, my total highest damage done in one turn was 65, and uh, most creatures 11, etc. So just a bit about you and your player leaderboards. Are all the people out in the world playing this game, and you know their position on the board? Now I'm at position 116,000, so I'm way down at the bottom. But I did just start playing this really, and. Uh, and so, so yeah, I will climb up this, I guess, slowly. And I'll never get up here, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, this is just for a bit of interest, if you if you care to see how you're progressing in the world of Magic players. The extras, a little bit of extra content thrown in for you. We've got some 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 galleries of the various uh, characters, like here's Chandra, who I said is the poster girl. With her, you get some artwork, so you can see a bit of the the creative uh, design that went into her. And there's these these bios which tell you about the characters, their all sorts of statistics, their their their, their history, their allies, enemies, etc. You also get video gallery, although I'm not going to show you any of the videos because they are unlocked as you play the campaign. So that would be sort of spoiling the story that goes with the campaign. And then there's these promotional unlocks. Uh, when I bought this, I got a promotional code which when um, handed into a Magic the Gathering sort of uh, shop, dealership type thing, you can get a pack of cards, uh, actual cards. So I still need to go hand that in. And I think the, the cut of time is December this year to do that, but well, at least it was for me. Anyway, that's some of the extras. The achievements uh, are essentially the achievements you saw in the player status, except this will pop up a Steam window uh, with your Steam achievements. The download content is against Steam, where you can download the DLC, the, the, the deck unlocks, and uh, and those sort of things. And then the help and options. <coughs> a good place to come if you've never played before, because there's a tutorial and the how to play, as well as your settings and all sorts of goodies. So that's the main interface, sort of covered. Let's hop into the deck manager and talk more about the decks that we have, the cards. Okay, so you'll see I've got here a, a lot of decks, and these are because I've bought the DLC and played the campaigns and unlocked them all. But you start off with Chandra's deck, Firewave, which uh, which is uh, it's an okay deck. Obviously, all these decks are good in their own way. They each have their own strengths and their own weaknesses, and so knowing when to play what type of deck is is what counts and how you put those cards together. This deck it has some statistics here on the on the side. The creature size, three stars out of five, so the creatures aren't all that large. The deck speed, three stars. Deck flexibility and card synergy. Now, as far as I understand, okay, creature size is quite obvious. Deck speed is how fast you can get cards into play. Uh, so it's like cheap cards, the low mana cost cards. Uh, deck flexibility is how what you can do with your deck, and the card synergy is how the cards. Uh, interact with each other because you have some cards that will buff up other cards and or, or characters and, and that sort of thing creatures so she has very low synergy so there's not much uh, enchanting or or buffing to be done on other cards but whereas guardians of light for instance have very high card synergy so Chandra is a mountains deck if we have a look at her hand here here are all the cards and this is the deck manager where you can go through all your cards and see what you've got now, I've got 24 cards locked. I have to play games to unlock these. I could unlock them through Steam, but I can't be bothered, quite frankly, to pay that extra 99 cents. I know it's only 99 cents, but, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a bit of fun when you, uh, in, in solving or winning games and, and unlocking a card. It's like a, a present, an award. So I like that. I like that I have to unlock them. But you can unlock the full deck. And there's this premium foil deck. I'm not sure what you get with that, but but anyway, uh, I've got 66 cards in this deck. If I come here and I go reset deck, the cards that pop up here are the cards that I have unlocked so far. This row at the bottom are the standard cards that came with the deck uh, without any modifications. There are 23 creatures in this deck, 12 other types of cards, and then 25 lands. These lands which you can choose the amount here and set it to however you like it. They say it should be about 40%. Uh, 
those lands are your mana or your your spell power, so to speak. You, the more mana you have, the more lands you have in play, the more you can cast. So, like for instance, here, this first little guy, the Goblin Arsonist, he costs one mountain to play him, it, put him onto the battlefield, and here, well, nice little graphic artwork. I love the art on these cards, actually. The, car the artwork is just fantastic, and I will often just sit and just stare at these these these, these bits of artwork for for ages, taking in all the little details that they've thrown in here. Really love it. But okay, on to the rest of the card. That's the cost up there. This is the card type. The black being a common card, so these are uh, it's a common yeah, as it's it's common card. And in the little white section here, we've got a description of what this card does. Uh, different cards do different things. So when Goblin Arsonist dies, you may have it deal one damage to target creature or player, which is quite good. If he gets killed by something, you have one extra damage you can throw wherever the hell you like. <clears throat> so it's essentially a two-one creature. And uh, and this down here, this this first number is the attack power, and this is the defense power. So this you you use when you attack something, this when blocking. And then these have little quotes: "With great power comes great risk of getting yourself killed." And funny little quotes that you find on these cards. So that deck has three of them. There's this disintegrate, which is now a sorcery spell. You see this one which says here a creature. This is a sorcery which you can cast, and sorcery obviously is like magic; you can do whatever. It says here, this disintegrate says, deal X amount of damage to target creature or player. That creature can't be regenerated this turn. Some creatures have this ability called regenerate, where their health gets uh, gets uh, uh, fixed. Well, fixed. Put back, put back up to full uh, when you do something. That creature can't be okay. If this creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Now, when creatures die, they either go into the to the graveyard or they get exiled. So it's two different piles. The exiled cards. You can never touch ever again. The the cards in the graveyard can be pulled back with certain spells. Some creatures have an ability to pull cards from your graveyard out, and, and that sort of thing. You can sort of resurrect these cards if they go into the graveyard. But when they're exiled, that's it. Goodbye. Um, so we've got some sorcery, which are the spell type. We've got another creature here, a human shaman. So with an extra cost, target creature you control gains haste. Now haste is a is a is an ability. There's a there's a ton of these abilities that come with cards. Uh, haste is an ability where you play your card and you can attack with him instantly. Otherwise, you have to sit back and wait for a turn because of something called summoning sickness, where your card is sort of you know woozy from being pulled out into the battlefield and you can't do anything with him except block an oncoming attack. You can't attack with him, but haste removes that summoning sickness. Uh, we've got more creatures here. We've got another creature. This is an artifact creature. I'm not sure what what an artifact creature means. I don't. I think it might. I don't know. Anyway, this one doesn't have a fire symbol up top here. It's only got a three, which means you can play it with three of any mana, which makes this card available in any deck. It's flying, which means creatures based on the ground cannot block it, and uh, only cre only fl creatures with flying or an ability called reach can stop this creature. And it's got an ability, it says, when Pilgrim's Eye enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is essentially a land draw, which can be very useful, because very often games, you get man uh, mana starved, which is, you, you pick up no lands almost, or you get creature starved, where you get no creatures, and your hand consists completely of lands, and that can be quite disastrous. So, bunch of creatures here. Here is an artifact which sits on the side of your of your of your battlefield, and you don't really do anything with it. It just it just passively provides something. This one, this staff of the flame magus, he whenever you cast a red spell or a mountain enters your battlefield under your control, gain one life. So you sit back with this thing on on your battlefield on the side, and whenever you play a land and and uh, and cast a spell, you get life. And there's various decks that are built on life getting uh, and some are on life taking and we'll talk about that. An instant is also a spell but can be played at any time. Uh, this one, Chandra's Outrage deals 4 damage to target creature. So you target this to a creature and 2 damage to that creature's controller. So the player itself gets 2 damage which is great, uh, a, great, uh, a great card there. And so that's 
well, we've also got uh, equipment, but there's no equipment in this deck. We've got up here a couple more cards I've unlocked. Nothing great. Let's just pop these. This is this is where you can customize your deck. You can you can move your you know say ah oh, I don't I don't want that card. I'll throw that out. I'll replace it with this. On average, they say you should have about 60 decks in your card. That is the standard uh, sort of amount. I've currently got 66. Not too bad. It's fine. Um, but you can. That's how you can customize these decks. Unfortunately, you can't say, "Oh, I want to take some of the green deck and mix it with some of the red deck and make my own custom deck." You can't do that, unfortunately. So that's one of the drawbacks of this game. You're limited in what you can do with your decks. You have to rely on the cards that they give you. Anyway, that's the red deck. Let's take a look at some of the other decks. That was the fire wave. This is the red deck, Chandra's deck. We have then got a Masks of Demir deck, which is a blue and black deck, uh, oceans and swamps. And this is about uh, dealing a lot of sort of removal spells that counteract uh, other spells or creatures and or remove damage, that sort of thing. We've got the Hunter's Strength, which is a forest only deck. And this is big creatures, just massive creatures, it's insane. We've got a Plains deck here. Aver Aversin's Glory, which is a sort of human deck. You put out human characters and you can push out creatures extremely quickly. See this deck speed is very high. The creatures are small, but that doesn't matter because it overwhelms. And the card synergy means that these, these cards can work well with each other and they boost each other up and that sort of thing. Here we've got Mind Maze, which is another blue deck. Blue is very spell based, very um, counters, very yeah, uh, white is about sort of getting small creatures out extremely quickly but buffing them up. Green is about big creatures. Red is about de dealing a lot of direct damage. And Swamps, the black deck, is uh, is dealing damage but also dealing damage to yourself. So you sort of sacrifice your own health to hurt the other person. Uh, and there's lots of... Um, a lot of thing to do with the graveyard, you can pull creatures out from the graveyard, that sort of thing. Um, so there's Deadwalkers for instance. We'll take a look at some of these <coughs> mono decks momentarily. Deadwalkers is a pure black deck. Another pure green deck, the Chant of Muldaya. And this one you can see large creature size, large card synergy, so these cards all work together and you can get massive creatures, but it's slow getting your cards out. The Sliver Hive, <coughs> a three colored deck. Plains, mountains, and forests, and great card synergy for this. The slivers are creatures that all sort of buff each other, and they, you get slivers in all the various different lands, uh, land types. <coughs> Excuse me, like I got a frog in my throat or something. Dodge and burn, one of my personal favorites. This playing against this can be extremely, extremely annoying because whatever you do, the person with dodge and burn has some sort of counter for it. Says, nope. Discard that card, block that spell, destroy that creature, blah blah blah, and it can be extremely frustrating to play against it. One of the reasons why I love playing with it, because I can just imagine the other player's frustration when I block every move that they make. Lords of Darkness, pure black deck. I uh, haven't played much with him, I don't like it so much. Uh, every time I've played against it, uh, a deck with this, uh, well, played with character with this deck, I win. So. I'm not sure, maybe I, I need to tweak the deck, maybe the unlock cards will, you know, you can modify it and create an awesome deck out of it, I don't know. Wall of Champions, card synergy, <coughs> card speed, also a three colored deck, and Sil Slivian's Might, Sil Sylvan, Sylvan's Might, Sylvan Might. This this deck has won me more uh, more challenges than, than any other deck, just because of the card synergy, the creatures here are absolutely insane. Sort of the Samurai. Human base, but they've oh, the the cards in here have a skill called Bushido, which boosts up their block. We'll look at them just now. Guardians of the Light, and we're back to the beginning. So we looked at Chandra. Let's look at, for instance, Hunter's Strength. Now the Hunter's Strength is about big creatures, lots of big creatures. Let's hop over to the end here, where usually the big stuff is kept. Like this. Look at this. Gurax Garuk's Horde, a seven-seven creature with trample. Trample means that. You can block this creature with a card. Let's say you blocked it with a 1-1. Yes, you'll stop one damage from going through, but the rest, the rest six, will continue through. Whereas cards without trample, that they just stop dead right there. That's the end of the the damage dealt. So it will deal seven damage to a one creature, and yeah, 
that's it, but trample will carry through. So this player with the top card of your library revealed, you may cast the top card of your library if it's a creature card. So this is a very powerful card. It's also gold. You can see it's a D14, it's gold, which means it is legendary, I believe. A legendary card. There aren't many of these legendaries, <coughs> so, and they're quite powerful. This is actually... Actually, I'm not sure now, because there's that gold, but there's... Oops. There's also this one, which is a dark gold. Um, I, I could be very wrong there. Correct me in the comments. Uh, let me know what these colors mean. I thought I think these silver ones are rare. But again, I may be wrong. But look at this. Enlarge. Creature gets plus 7, plus 7, and trample. This is a sorcery, so you apply to creature until end of turn. So it's, it lasts for one turn. So you usually do that before attacking. So you can see creatures you control get plus 3, plus 3, and trample. That's all creatures. So this powerful, powerful cards. Here we've got a big spider with vigilance, which means it does not become tapped. So you can use it constantly. And reach means you can block flying creatures. Um, what's this? Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. So you buff a creature up by one, and then you can force it to fight one of the other uh, creatures that the opponent has. Which is great to knock off creatures because you can't directly attack creatures in this game. You can only attack the the player. The player then decides if he wants to block those attacks or not. So this is a great way of dealing with other creatures uh, that you want to get rid of. Destroy non-creature permanent. You can destroy a land or an artifact or a uh, yeah a weapon, an equipment of sorts. Non-creatures. Uh, here we've got a troll with an ability called regenerate, so his health can be pumped up if he gets hurt by a spell or whatever. Uh, yeah, so I mean, okay, they don't seem all that impressive. The cards, I mean, here's a four-five, which is quite a monster of a card, but has no special abilities. It's just a straight four-five. But for a cost of three mana, that's very good value for for money, so to speak. Some of these are annoying, like this, the gloom spider can block only creatures with flying. So if, you, if you're playing against a, a person with no flying creatures, well, this card's pretty useless. I mean, you've got the attack, but you can't block anything. There's also searching your library for forests, uh, which can be quite helpful if you get mana starved. Uh, yeah, so you don't have enough mana to cast your creatures. And this is a very popular first uh, or second uh, second turn play. It's Gadok's Companion, which is a cheap two card for 3-2. This one as well. Is a 3 3 for 2 cost. Um, so, yeah, the, these are about the big creatures and the sorcery. Target creature you control fights another target creature. This one doesn't have the buff like the other one did. So, let's save and quit. And uh, let's have a look at, like, the white deck here. Everson's Glory. This white deck is about human cards, getting them out quickly, and uh, and sort of stacking them up with each other. So, Champion of the Parish, one of my most hated cards when someone else is playing it. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Champion of the Parish. Now, a counter is different to uh, just a, a standard plus one, plus one. Uh, a counter stacks, and so if it, something buffs this and it gets a counter, if you destroy that uh, creature that buffed it, the counter will stay. Whereas if it was just enter, put a plus one, plus one, if you destroy the creature, that would then drop by one, etc. So this can get extremely powerful extremely quickly by pumping out these humans. And they have to be of type human. Like you see this Doom Traveler only has one cost. So you can knock a lot of these out very quickly. And some of these are quite nice. Like the Doom Traveler when he dies he gets a flying spirit token. A 1-1 one, one flying. Uh, here's the selfless Cathar which if you sacrifice him all the creatures you get, you, you have, get a plus one plus one until the end of turn. And there's this, this uh, Path to Exile, which is just plain old annoying when someone throws one of these on you. Exile target creature is controller may search library for basic land. So you get a land out of it if, you, if your creature gets exiled. But for one cost, you can exile any creature, no matter how powerful it is. Unless it's got an, a, a, an enchantment on it which makes it hexproof, which means you can't cast spells or, or that sort of thing against it. Um, but then once it's exiled, it's out of the game. It doesn't go in your graveyard, it's gone. So you can see two. Uh, this is a 2-1 with Vigilance, and uh, here's a 1-1 Unruly Mob, 
Whenever another creature control dies, put a plus one plus one on him. So he also starts getting incredibly powerful. Uh, and yeah, we've got a bunch of um, enchantments here. So this is an annoying one. When, in, when Oblivion Ring enters the battlefield, exile another target non-land permanent. So this kicks a card out of your hand, or off your battlefield. And then when it leaves, return that card. So you have to kill it to get your card back. But you can take a creature out of play quite quickly with that. This guy, Gold Knight Commander, whenever another creature enters your battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Everything gets buff, uh, buffed up. So you can just see, the, I mean these things are quite cheap, okay, he's four mana. But you have all these little guys out here which, you know, cost two or three. And things start getting quite ridiculous quite quickly. And uh, this is probably the most powerful card in the deck, the 5-5, five five. Oh, there's, there's another one here. So there's two 5-5s five flying, uh, and uh, yeah, painful, especially once you've got all these other ones that buff everything. So that's the white deck, getting lots of cards out, but they work well with each other, they buff each other, that sort of thing. The the blue deck, like I said, was spells and lots of, lots of removal type things. So you'll see some creatures here. Uh, this is the illusion deck, so whenever an illusion becomes targeted by a spell, no matter how low the damage or whatever, or whatever it does, it will be have to be sacrificed. <clears throat> but you have lots of these spells like this. Return target creature to its owner's hand. So just pulling stuff off the battlefield for you. Cloning another person's creatures. This is the, the phantasmal image, so you make a clone of it. With its buffs and everything. Here we've got... Uh, <clears throat> We can buff our creatures with a plus one plus one, and they have hex proof. And this guy is unblockable, but that's by characters. You can spell, you can cast spells against it, sort of thing. This is one of the the big cards, the well, the, the the powerful cards in the deck. Um, it's a three four, but with the buffs and the spells and stuff you can do against it, it can get quite powerful. And this is one of my favorite cards in this deck, claustrophobia. That person's creature you put this on here and it is essentially dead weight on the on the battlefield can't do anything it can't it's tapped and it does not become untapped so you can never ever use it obviously abilities that that card has that apply to the other cards would still be in effect so if it buffs other cards that would still be in effect but you can't attack or defend with it so here counter spells here's another counter spell and the person draws a card uh, this is about finding cards in your library and that sort of thing. So you can sort of see what they're going for here in this deck. Next deck we've got... Okay, that's a mixed deck. Let's go with the black deck here. Dead Walkers. Now, like I said, Dead Walkers are about dealing death and pain to both you and your opponent. And do a lot with the graveyard. So, Gravecrawler, he can't block. But, you may cast him from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. Uh, so he can just come back from the dead continually all the time can be quite annoying um, this guy comes into the graveyard uh, sorry comes into the battlefield tapped which means you can't use him but he's a 2-2 two, two for one cost so you know that's that's why he's so cheap and you've got these these guys like undying and undying if it gets killed comes back again with a plus one plus one now for removal when black cat dies target opponent discards a card at random getting rid of a person's cards. It's just a zombie creature. This is destroy target non black creature, so that's pretty good. Here, if you're looking for cards, you have to pay with life. Two cards for two life, sacrifice you make. This one is a very popular card that whenever he comes onto the battlefield, you have to sacrifice a creature, which can be painful. And then when you've got that teamed up with uh, some other card, well, there's another card here, that you can play in uh, what what is it there's a card that you can pull things back from the graveyard uh, I don't know anyways uh, let's see this one tendrils of corruption deal X amount of damage to target creature and you gain X amount of life okay this one's different where you actually gain life for doing the casting the spell whereas usually in these decks you sort of take your own life to gain uh, the advantage with powerful cards. But that's the sort of deal you're looking at here. I haven't unlocked any decks in this in this uh, any cards in this deck yet. I haven't played with it yet. 
but that's the sort of uh, that's sort of what you're looking at with a black deck. That leaves us with nothing. Right, so green, big monsters, red is direct damage, blue spells, white is sort of overwhelming your opponent, and black is sort of just damage, but also dealing with, about, uh, with the, uh, the graveyard, pulling things backwards and f back and forth, and just uh, sort of, uh, yeah, keeping things going. <coughs> I not not the biggest fan of black, it, to be honest, the gay, the, this one, Sylvian's Might. Has uh, has done the most for me because of the the power that you can do with your cards in here. I mean the card synergy is just insane. We'll take a quick look at this and then we'll wrap up there. Here we've got okay, the, like this guy here. He's one cost card, but if you have more mana, so multi kicker, so plus two lands, so two mana. For every two mana you can add to this guy, every other creature gets a plus one plus one. Um. So other cre elf creatures you control get plus one plus for each counter on him. So he also gets counters. Uh, so I mean you can do that with an enchantment or, or something. This guy is just a simple block. If he attacks, everything has to block it. So he sort of directs damage away from your your creatures. Here we got health. So this just deals health every time you get a creature in play. Hexproof can't be targeted by spells or abilities. You can see that the creature size here has been quite small so far. But uh, you'll see why these stack up just just now. So now, okay, more health over here, but you have to tap this one to get the health, all equal to the number of elf you have on your battlefield. So if you have six characters out, that's six life right there. Now, you start picking up cards like this. It's a creature card, but if you tap this card, your creatures get plus x plus x until the end of turn, where x is the number of elves on your battlefield. So if you've got six creatures, you tap this guy out. And all, 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 all of a sudden, you can choose a creature to add an extra 6 damage and defense to for that turn. Crazy. This one, you can turn a forest that you're controlling, maybe that you haven't played, into a creature with, again, XX being where X number of elves you control. Uh, here we've got... Uh, oops. Here, enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 2 for each other creature on the battlefield that shares its type. This is absolutely insane. You have 6 elves. You put this on one creature, 6, 2 plus 2 for each creature, that's 12 extra uh, damage and defense you can put onto that creature. So you can see how these sort of can stack up with each other. Searching through your library, here we've got a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. Um, yeah, and this one, with if you add those other abilities to this, this one comes out and it's health and, and, and uh, attack and defense grow with every elf you have on the battlefield. The more elves, the higher, uh, the higher power of this creature. Then with extra enchantments and whatnot, absolutely insane. So you can see this is the final sort of enchantment here. Plus 8, plus 8 and has trample. Absolutely devastating. If you've got a nice array of cards out there, you play this out on say this character who's already got like 6-6 six, six from all the elves and then you before you attack you, you take one of these guys and tap it gets an extra 6-6 six, six. I mean you're looking already at like what 20 damage just by doing that etc etc so the card synergy in this deck is amazing and and that's it as far as what we're covering today this has been introduction to magic the Gathering, uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 we've had a look at the decks uh, some of the decks uh, I will be playing uh, just with various decks, uh, you know, recording them. Be playing against them, maybe some single player games or some multiplayer, and see how we do. And uh, I'm still learning. I'm still very much a noob at this. And like I said, I haven't unlocked all the decks, so I don't have all the cards. So I'm not. My decks aren't uh, custom built. Uh, I'm unlocking them as I play, uh, which might set me back against other people who have unlocked all the decks and customized their decks completely. But yeah, it's you know it's 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 good fun. It's it's quick, so I can I can play this during lunch break, and uh, and play get a couple games in. So it's that's a good way. It's 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 I like these games where you, you don't have to sit down and spend four hours just uh, you know set aside for that game. You can just hop in, play a couple matches, go back to work sort of thing. Anyway. That has been uh, my introduction to Magic the Gathering. I hope you've enjoyed uh, enjoyed this episode. Uh, future episodes will be with actual 
gameplay and actually battling characters and, 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 and defeating opponents. And uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already uh, to catch all those updates. And uh, hit a like if you, if you like Magic the Gathering. Or if you want me to get out episodes quicker, which I can do, the more people that like this, the quicker I'll pop these things out. And uh, while I'm here, if you haven't already checked out some of the other playthroughs I've done on my channel, go ahead, I've got uh, No One Lives Forever, and No One Lives Forever 2 I started. I did a lot of work on that, put a lot of extra effects and, uh, and stuff in, but I've sort of uh, taken a pause from that for now. But we've got System Shock 2, we've got Clive Barker's Undying, I've usually gone for the older style games, which aren't really covered all that well on YouTube. So go ahead, check those out, and uh, I'll see you again shortly for the next episode. Um, I hope you all have a great weekend, and from me, Brazen Braden, bye-bye.